GCF, as you probably already know, stands for greatest common factor. So that means the largest number that we can divide all of our given terms by. So let's look at the first one, because the best way to look at GCF is just by looking at examples. In the first one, if we look at our number terms, we have an 8, a 12, actually a negative 12, and a positive 15. Think about the largest number you can think of that goes into all three. Well, I know that 1, 2, 4, and 8 go into 8. Um, 1, 2, and 4 also go into 12, as well as 6 and 12 and 3. But for 15, I can just think of 1, 3, 5, and 15. So it doesn't seem that there's one number that can go into all three of these numbers evenly. So they have a GCF of 1. So there's nothing that we can factor out of our number terms. Now let's look at our variable terms. We have an x to the third, an x to the sixth, and an x to the fifth, which means we could take out, they all have at least x to the third. So we're going to factor out an x to the third. And then they all, when we look at the y's, we have a y to the fourth, a y to the fourth, and a y squared. So they all have at least a y squared. So we're also going to factor that out. All right, so when you look at the first term, this one right here, I'm going to leave the 8, because there's nothing I can factor out of the 8. The x cubed, I'm going to factor out an x cubed, which is going to leave me with no x term for the, no x power for the first term. The y to the fourth, I'm going to take out a y squared, which is going to leave me with a y squared. All right, let's go to the next term. The next term, my negative 12 is going to stay. I have an x to the sixth, but I'm taking out an x to the third. So if I take out an x to the third, that'll leave me with x to the third. Remember that the exponents add together when you're multiplying the powers. So for my y to the fourth, if I'm taking out a y squared, that's going to leave me with a y squared. And then my last term, I'm not doing anything to the 15. But from my x to the fifth, I'm taking out three of them, right? If I take three of them out, factor them out, that leaves me with two. And then for my y squared, I'm taking y squared, so then there would be nothing left there, just one. So I don't write it, and then I'm done. So now I have factored out the greatest common factor. All right, let's look at another one. Always start with the number terms and then do your variables one at a time. So if I look at my number terms, 9, positive 27, positive 3, I notice that they can all be divided evenly by 3. So I'm going to take a 3 out. Then when I look at my letter terms, for my letter terms, I've got an A, so that's like an A to the first, an A cubed, and an A to the seventh. So they all have at least one A that I can take out. And then for my other variable term, my Bs, I've got a B to the fourth, B to the sixth, B to the eighth. They all have at least four, so I'm going to take out four. All right, so let's see what I'm left with. I'll be left with, when I factor out my number term, so I'm dividing each one by 3. So for the first term here, I will have a, I have 9. I'm factoring out a 3, so I'll be left with a 3. Then for my A term, I've got A to the first, but I'm taking out A to the first, so I won't have any A term left there. I'm, I've got a B to the fourth, but I'm taking out B to the fourth. So all I'll be left from the first term, all I'll be left with is a 3. The next one, 
I've got 27 divided by 3. A to the third, but I'm taking out A to the first. So if I have 3 and I'm taking out 1, I'll be left with 2. And B to the sixth, but I'm taking out B to the fourth, so I'll be left with B squared. All right, in the last term, I'm, I've got 3, but 3 divided by 3 is just 1, so I, you can write the 1, but I'm not going to because it doesn't change anything. Then I've got A to the seventh, but I'm taking out one of the A's, so I'm taking out A to the first, which leaves me with A to the sixth. And then I've got B to the eighth, but I'm taking out B to the fourth, so that leaves me with B to the fourth. And I'm done. All right, let's do one more. In this last one, I can see right away that I can take out four from each of these, but I can't do anything with my variables because every term doesn't have a variable. So I can't, there's not a variable like an R that I can take from every term. So let's take the four out. So when I factor out a four, I'm left with just r squared, and then minus r, and then minus 30. Now, you might remember from previous algebra courses that sometimes when you have a trinomial like this, where we have the first term squared, the second term, an r, a variable to the first power, and then a constant term, we can factor this. And this is one of those cases. We can factor, and we did a little bit of factoring in previous lessons, but we can take this 30 and write factors of 30 off to the side here. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. And we're looking for a factor pair that when multiplied together will give us negative 30. But when added together, will give us a pos I'm sorry, a negative one. So as I scan through my choices, I notice that this choice, if I make the six negative, will give me a negative one when I add them together. So that's the pair that I need to fill in. So I have an R here and an R here, and then I would have a plus five here and a minus six here. And we're going to get more into factoring later in, um, in some later lessons. But this is just um, the easy version, I would say, of factoring because our coefficient for the squared term is just one. So anytime we have, um, hold on, anytime we have a one right here in front of the squared term, then we can just break it up and factor it quickly and easily in this way. 